It's time to accelerate. Hi, I'm your host, Andy Paul. Join me as I host conversations with the leading experts in sales, marketing, sales automation, sales process, leadership, management, training, coaching, any resource that I believe to help you accelerate the growth of your sales, your business, and most importantly, you. Hello, and welcome to Accelerate. I am looking forward to talking with my guest today. Joining me is Nicholas Vandenberg, co-founder and president of Chili Piper. Not Chili Pepper, Chili Piper, just so people don't think I mispronounced that. That's uh, focused on making an intelligent calendaring system for sales teams. Nicholas, welcome to Accelerate. Thank you. So take a minute, introduce yourself, sir. Tell us how you found your way into this this. You know, the space that you're addressing with Chili Piper. Sure. So uh, this is my uh, fourth company. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've done uh, different companies, always tech companies in different spaces. I've done consumer software, e-commerce, uh, biometrics. Um, Bi- biometrics? All, what did you do in the biometrics in, space? I, um, that's a good question. We, we had partnered with uh, this brilliant technology invented a, a unique way to recognize people's face. Mm-hmm. He did that in 2003. So it was a very timely thing because, of course, uh, after September 11, uh, security was a, right. a, a, a big concern with big budget. And he built this application that could tell apart identical twins. That's how precise it was. Wow. So when we did that, we um, met some U.S. government officials. They say who who are you? We said, the company, the three of us. They said, okay, so they introduced us to the largest uh, defense contractor, strongly recommended they buy our company, which they did for a very good price, and then we got the contract for all uh, passports and U.S. visas. Uh, so when you send your photo for your passport, your photo is processed by us or our software to make sure that you're not on a watch list and you don't have a duplicate passport and so on. It's been deployed... Uh, to uh, all the um, first, all the uh, international visas, and then all the U.S. passports. By the way, if you go to the border, you see people having their picture taken as they cross the border in the U.S. It's also our software checking that uh, you're not one of the terrorists uh, on the list. So, so that, were you were you in the U.S. at that time? Yes, I was already in the U.S. I, I came to the U.S. to go to Stanford Business School in the mid '90s. Um, I was uh, at the birth of the internet uh, in uh, in Palo Alto and San Francisco in the mid nineties, mm-hmm. um, and then I came to New York uh, in the early two thousands, and I've seen the growth of the tech scene here in New York in the last uh, fifteen years. It's been quite impressive. So um, that, that that's my background. I, I played around a little bit uh, for a while. Uh, in the venture capital space, I was uh, with Draper Fisher Jefferson in New York and then decided that this is not something for me. I'm an operational guy and I decided to uh, jump back into uh, starting companies. And the idea to, um, that I'm currently working on came from uh, my own experience with uh, uh, CRM systems in general and Salesforce in particular. Uh, they, the systems have been designed in the late 90s and they do a really good job as a systems of record. So by now they're very sophisticated and well integrated with a lot of other apps. But I uh, can I could see that uh, there are many ways around mobile and, and web apps to add value to the end user. Um, and that Salesforce uh, would be challenged to do these apps because it's just uh, hard for them with such a huge system in place to evolve. <laughs> So that that was the original idea. So I'm going to focus on the helping salespeople do their job better. Uh, there's a huge opportunity. There's a lot of salespeople. Um, it's, if you help their life, um, the results are immediate. You can tell that they book more revenues and they sell more. So it's it's easy to prove the return on investment. And we first started looking at the inbox of salespeople and their email and trying to help the email and quickly we found that uh, there's a lot of companies already focused on that space but there are very very few if any uh, focused on the calendar and yet if you think of it uh, meetings uh, you know the the, the, the blood uh, the lifeblood of, of 
sales, right? In the end, you send a meeting, you send emails mostly to send documents and to book a meeting. And the meeting is where you're really going to be able to explain the value of your product. So we actually surprised to these days that there's not more attention uh, on the calendar application for salespeople, and that's what we're focusing on. We started with a very narrow uh, pain point um, because uh, it's always a good idea when you just start up to focus on something uh, that you can dominate. So that pain point is the handoff of meetings between prospecting team and selling team. So, so well, between right. So let's let's talk about that. Let's deconstruct that for a little bit. So. So why is why do you think people weren't paying attention to calendar? You say this is you know critical sort of pain point we're going to get into. I know you know studies been done on how many clicks it takes to set up a meeting, uh, your fear an SDR and so on. But but why do you think it, people are so focused yeah. on email and not on calendars, which is really sort of where everything flows from? Um, that's a good question, uh, and I. Don't know that I know the answer. I, I do think that uh, here's how I think of it. Um, in Silicon Valley, often people uh, think about pain. So is there a pain? And I think there was clearly pain around email. For example, uh, uh, people were sending the same email over and over. So yes, we came and did uh, email templates. So there was a pain in copying and pasting the same data. So that was the question. Then people wonder if people would open their email. So Tartup came with uh, um, email tracking. There was some pain of, I uh, wonder if people have seen my email. In the calendar, um, it's not clear that there's the equivalent pain. So that's probably the reason why people focused on email there, there yet. And you would think, well, if there's no pain, then there's no business, but that's not the case. Um, I think uh, Steve, Steve, when Steve Jobs launched the iPhone, um, I was my phone was a Nokia at the time, and I had no pain with it. It was working just fine, right? But when Steve Jobs came with the iPhone, they say, well, I want that. That's a much better way to do it. And so our take is that people may not have this pain that they've identified, but we do know that there are many there are better ways to do uh, calendar by taking advantage of, of uh, the information we have from Salesforce and from other sources. So, in, the, in summary, the, I think the answer to your question is that uh, the, the opportunity to add value is less obvious in the calendar. I think it's, it's equally real, but less less obvious to everybody. All right. So let's let's then talk sort of the baseline application, or maybe one of the first applications you're doing with Chili Piper, which. Well, actually, before we go there, so what's what's the inspiration for the name Chili Piper? <laughs> yeah, so it comes from uh, he who pays the piper called the tune. That's where it comes from. But, so, uh, we, where, we, Ryan, where's the chili come in? <laughs> because then um, I can't remember at some stage where we we uh, we display on word on chili chili pepper and chili piper and we said okay. well that sounds cool because the piper will be hot and those. so we um we say that make a hot piper but the piper calls the tune that's the idea that uh, okay. you know, our software is going to drive sales and call right. the tune okay sorry just want to get that out of the way so um so you've talked about initially as one of the applications is really facilitating the ability to set meetings if you're an SDR BDR set a meeting for an account exec, whether that's a demo or a conversation or whatever. And yeah, I was just talking to someone saying that it can take uh, SDRs up to 250 mouse clicks to, to schedule meetings right now. So how do, you, how do you facilitate that? What's the system do? So what we do is that uh, we have both a back end and a front end. Uh, the back end when the SDR is uh, looking at a prospect, we look at the data in Salesforce about that prospect and make sure that it's routed to the proper account executives. And that may be either a named account executive who on the account or um, an account executive to be assigned on a round robin basis. So our backend does uh, that, it, it routes using Salesforce data. So for example, let's say this prospect is in Los Angeles, it's a large company, it should go to the large enterprise West Coast team. This prospect is in Texas, it should go to the Southern uh, mid market team. Um, and then we make sure that the round robin assignment is fair. So that's the backend piece. And then... Uh, well, and let's, let's 
before I jump on, so let's talk about the round robin piece. So you have in there the ability to set rules in terms of how the leads should be distributed based on some some you know algorithm that you set up. That's exactly right. You can set these rules, um, uh, and and you can use. Uh, all the main objects in Salesforce, lead contact of, uh, accounts, opportunities, and all custom and standard fields in Salesforce to decide on how to uh, route something. So a lot of our customers have custom fields. For example, uh, one of our customers is a company called Billium in Boston. They help uh, property management. And the key thing is how many units are under management. And that's a custom field in the Salesforce instance. And based on the number of units, they're going to route to different teams. And the software will do that. You say, uh, this prospect uh, worked for a company that has 2,000 units under management should go to the uh, you know, uh, enterprise team or in-market team. So then we... Uh, we assign to a contact executive and we make sure that the assignment is fair. And the way we do that is we look at over a month period, we make sure that all the contact executive receives the same amount of meetings. We give the option to put some of them on, uh, on uh, a, a lower rate. So you may have people who are new who should only get half the amount of meetings or third amount of meetings. We also manage for vacation, when people on vacation, we understand that the, that month they will have fewer meetings. And we do all that automatically. So the SDR doesn't have to wonder who's next, doesn't have to wonder, uh, make sure it's fair. It's all done automatically by, by our backend uh, system. So when the rep is putting together the handoff to the account exec, what's that process look like then? So we uh, to describe how the process looks like, we... we I have to mention that we've also uh, built a front end. It's a browser extension in Chrome. And what it does is that it inserts a little icon next to the prospect in the application that the SDRs are most likely to use. So within Gmail, GCAL, Salesforce, Outreach, SalesLoft, um, the SDR will see a little icon. And if he or she presses this icon, it's going to our software open the calendar of the right account executive. So in one click, you can see in one place the calendar of the account executive which is going to get that meeting. You can select the time uh, in the account executive's calendar to book the meeting. And once you've selected the time, we pre-fill all the information in the title, meeting description, location. We even call the API of, of uh, applications like uh, GoToMeeting to retrieve the meeting info and dynamically insert that into the invite. So one click opens the calendar, one click to select the time, one click to confirm, that does it. Uh, the entire meeting is booked, the prospect receives an invitation with all the correct information. We actually write it to Salesforce, so the meeting is now in Salesforce and the, the activity, uh, open activities for the prospect. And in Salesforce, you can create all sorts of triggers, for example, change the owner, uh, even uh, convert the lead to an account that was an opportunity, do all these things, uh, immediately in real time because of software right to Salesforce in real time. So we've res you mentioned 250 clicks. Uh, a lot of our uh, customers tell us that it takes about 10 to 12 minutes when they do a round robin to properly book the meeting. With our solution, it takes three clicks. Literally three clicks, one click on our little icon, one click on the calendar of the account executives, and one click to confirm. So we, we are very happy customers so you can uh, share some testimonials that uh, are actually beyond our expectation. They, 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 they uh, thank us for hours have been saved. Another company in San Francisco called Five Stars uh, has told us that uh, when they started deploying our software, they saved uh, one full-time uh, equivalent uh, for a team of 50 people. Yeah, full-time equivalent of an SDR. Yeah, or the uh, sales ops, yeah. 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 Interesting. So, so, okay. So, what's beyond now? You do the SDR. You've done the SDR AE handoff. So, how does this then populate? Let's say to somebody that's not using inside sales, maybe a more conventional uh, Salesforce or somebody that's a little bit of a hybrid team. Um, how is the calendaring going to work for them? So, the application, the front end application that I've described, um, is uh, in, in effect a way to accelerate the booking of meetings. And uh, to anybody who books a lot of meetings, and that's most salespeople, at least people with a uh, high volume, um, 
that is applicable to their process. So now we have signed to have customers who just use our app without a handoff, just to book their own meetings. Uh, it not only makes it faster, it also makes it more accurate. So in two clicks, I can send you a meeting invitation that will have your name, your company number, my uh, go to meeting or join me uh, information uh, precisely at the right time, uh, plus directly in Salesforce. So now we're finding that uh, the, the self booking of meetings is, uh, is uh, um, tremendously helped by our application. And of course, we, we're going to work on more features, the ability to let the prospect uh, self-book by sending some available, available times and a URL where they can uh, book, the, book the meeting with, uh, with a salesperson. And we're working on other features around uh, creating value around the meeting. So have there been any sort of correlations that you've been able to see between... I know there's time saving we talked about, but what about from the customer end? Is there any benefit you've seen in terms of being able to more quickly schedule the meetings in terms of you know higher yield out of the meetings that are scheduled? Yes, that's a good question. So uh, our first application, the booking is done by the salesperson. And the advantage for the prospect is that it's, it's done in real time. We no longer have to wait to, spend 12 minutes to book that meeting. It's, it takes three clicks from salesperson. So the prospect receives imme- immediately the invitation with all the information while it's still on the phone with the salesperson. And, and that helps um, re- reduce the number of no-show because the, the prospect has seen the invitation, is confirmed, is committed to it, and uh, is much more likely to show up for that, that uh, meeting. Now we're we building, as I mentioned, the ability for the prospect to book himself or herself by sending availability. So in one click, uh, the prospect uh, will be able to confirm the meeting. And that's also a time saver from the prospect. And then the big uh, things we are working on next is uh, adding value further, not only in time saving, but also in effectiveness. So when you're having a meeting with somebody, each meeting has um, an objective, right? So you're trying to do two things. You're trying to gather some information. So you're typically in the early stage, you're qualifying the prospect. Uh, in the later stages, you're trying to go deeper into the, the pain point and some important uh, variables that, that matter to this process. So you're trying to uh, capture some information and you're also trying to um, influence the prospect by conveying uh, how your solution can help. And that both process of capturing information and conveying information can be helped by uh, intelligent software that makes sure that you ask the right question at the right time, that if some information is missing, you it pops up and tells you you have to get this information. And by making sure that uh, the next meeting, you uh, have all the information up to date available before you start the meeting. And that's a, a tremendous boost to the effectiveness of the sales process. I had... Um, the case happened late last week when a, a sales, an account executive called me and started asking me the same question that the SDR had asked me before. And I'm thinking, why, why is he wasting my time asking questions he should have known from, from the SDR, right? And it could be that uh, the SDR didn't put it anywhere. It could be that they put it in Salesforce, but uh, it's hard to, for the account executive to retrieve in Salesforce. But the bottom line is that that the account executive was not... Uh, in possession of the information that should have saved uh, five to ten minutes and made my experience, me the prospect, uh, much more enjoyable. So that's the, the next frontier. What we're going to address is, is, is the execution of the meetings around data capture and, and uh, information uh, management. But it seems like there are more systems out there today that talk about the ability to help reps ask the right questions at the right time. Uh, you know, people trying to automate parts of the playbook and so on. So where do you see what you would do in that to be somewhat differentiated from the other products that are out there? That's a very good question. Um, the, the systems, I'm not aware of any of the systems being a success. Um, so 
Well, that, we'll, that, that could be. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that they're <laughs> not saying that they do what no, they no, no, claim no, that's they do well. Fair, but but that's, that's a fair point. And, 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 and I think the reason for, for that is that salespeople t- still consider themselves as uh, artists to some extent. There's, there's, there's a skill in it. And uh, something heavy that is a play, this is how you do it. You go through the screen and the screen and the screen. It's just not something that matches their nature. And so you, uh, we see companies uh, able to do uh, workflows in Salesforce for the uh, prospecting teams. So they go and ask this, ask this, ask this. But as soon as it's uh, f- further down the funnel, um, Right, it breaks down. You, you, you get, yeah, it breaks down. You get a rebellion if you say you, you're an account executive, and you, it, it's what you screen one, you're going to ask that, screen two, you're going to show that, screen three. So these playbooks that are heavy, more like a workflow, uh, do not get it up. I'm, I'm, I can't think of a couple. In the SDR world, some adoption, in the account executive, zero. I can't think of any account executive who says it's fantastic. No, I, I just put it screen. They'll say, look, you are paying me good money for my talent, I don't want anything. So the challenge to um, do something that's pleasant for the account executive that adds value and yet does guide the account executive towards a process that has been proven uh, more effective. Right? So it is proven that if you ask these questions, you, you're going to be in a better position to explain the value proposition of your product. And s- sometimes the account executive will forget. So the solution is not to put a big, heavy... Uh, uh, business process in place. The solution is to find a smart way to entice the account executive to ask a question and capture the data. And we f- think that we we cracked it by uh, going through the calendar and and doing an app that's a, mo- a lot more user friendly. Yeah, I mean, I really think that this is the the next frontier, right? Is is the account execs? There's so much. Emphasis being placed on on SDRs and the volume of applications that have been introduced and continue continue to be introduced to support the SDR function. Yeah, the account executive is a lot harder to sell to. They, they, uh, ironically, even tech companies they're not as technophile. They tend to be technophobes. Uh, they view themselves as uh, social skills people, and uh, so it's much harder to get them to adopt technology. But um, that. Making it harder doesn't make it impossible. So it's a better, it's a bigger challenge and a worthy challenge to try to get some apps for them that they actually enjoy using. Well, that not only enjoy using, but also that help them close orders, right? So at the end of the day, anything that helps an account exec close an order is something that's likely to be adopted. Right. That's right. That's right. So um, now we're going to move into the last segment of the show, Nicholas, where I've got some standard questions I ask all my guests. And uh, the first one is a hypothetical scenario, and you're a serial entrepreneur, so this would be a good question for you. Is In this scenario, you, Nicholas, have just been hired as a vice president of sales at a company that sales and revenue have stalled out, and the CEO and the board are anxious to have it turned around in a hurry. So what two things could you do your first week on the job that have the biggest impact in terms of starting a sales turnaround? The first thing I would look at which... uh, I believe that the core of sales is, is qualification. So you, I, I don't believe in selling eyes to Eskimos, right? I don't believe in, the, the, there was this talks about uh, you can sell anything to anybody. I don't believe that's the case. You, you could you sell somebody who has a real problem and, and for whom your solution brings a lot of value. So the first thing I would do is look at which accounts are closed and what what is specific to them um, that made them close. And then I would look at the, the prospect that we have in the funnel and I would focus on the account that are more likely to close uh, and, and possibly exclude the one that are not as qualified so that uh, um, no time is wasted on, on the accounts that are not going to close. So that, that, would, that would be the immediate uh, first thing is uh, the, uh, a refocus on the pipeline. And then of course, the second thing is uh, you have to look at the talents and skills of your team and uh, assess where they are and uh, try to help those who need help um, and those salespeople who need help in making sure that uh, uh, they uh, come up to speed both in their knowledge of the product and their understanding of the process and also some more general skills that they may be, may be lacking. So that would take 
a bit more time, but you can turn around people pretty quickly if you identify a, a weakness and help them work on it. So these would be the two things I would do. Okay, and get them using an intelligent calendar system. So, um, okay, so now some rapid, <laughs> some rapid fire questions to, uh, and you can give me one word to answers, or you can elaborate if you wish. So. When you personally, when you, Nicholas, are out selling, let's say Chili Piper Services, what's your most powerful sales attribute? Uh, of me personally? You, per- you personally. You personally. So I actually care uh, um, about people. And I, I am really um, finding, I'm finding a lot of pleasure in helping people. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think my prospects feel it they they know that i'm i'm, I'm there to help uh, of course so we in business so we want to close the deal and and get the revenues but uh the natural inclination that i have is to help people and i think that's what uh, people feel and as a result they say well, i want to work with this guy because he, he, he will be there um when i need, need him okay great answer next question is who's your sales role model my sales role model. Um, so I started my career in uh, strategy consulting. Um, I uh, joined a spin-off of the Boston Consulting Group, started by um, one of their uh, lead European partners, and he was able to grow his company uh, from zero to and a hundred consultants in a very short time, uh, mostly thanks to his salesmanship. And so that it, it, it definitely influenced my career a lot. Uh, what I found is that um, he was able to um, rephrase his, his client's problem in, in, a, in a much a more it was both conceptual and practical so he would take a problem and he immediately identify how to put a framework around this problem that made the solution clear and as a result this company would hire him and that is strong I think if you, if you if you can phrase the problem if you identify the problem and put it in the right framework as the French say is a uh, uh, from the idea that uh, a, a problem one phrase is already half resolved, um, and that that's what he was doing, and so that was a strong influence. So I, when I go into a, a prospect, I will always, always try to find okay, what is the problem, and how can I explain it in a way that that half res, uh, half solves it. So okay. That would be a micro model of that person. Okay, excellent. So one book that every salesperson should read. So that's a very good question. I had not liked any of the sales books until recently. Um, I, I, uh, I found that the statements that are unproven, um, I'm one of the few people who think that the challenge of sales is actually uh, um, uh, crippled with a lot of mistakes, things that, that will not work or are unproven to work. Mm-hmm. But there has been one book uh, recently that I found very strong. It's a sales development playbook by uh, Trish. For um, right. Yeah, that's right. And that's because she doesn't try to tell people how to sell in the world of selling. She's very practical. She says, you, you, you need to be a sales development team. And this is how you build a sales development team. From hiring to paying to motivating to setting goals um, it's real practical information, yet she never loses uh, sight of the big picture. So that that's definitely a strong book. I have also liked the uh, Mark Roberger's book, um, the uh, chief revenue officer from uh, HubSpot, right. um, around this process. So that has also been uh, my, that would be my second recommendation. Okay, great. Good books, both of them. Both have been guests on the show. People can go back and listen to their episodes. So finally, the last question for you is uh, what music's on your playlist these days? Okay, so I'm a big fan of uh, being based in New York. uh, uh, I'm biased towards this artist called Philip Glass, Mm -hmm. who does this minimalist music. And uh, inevitably, I go back to his music and, and, and put it back on my playlist. So that's what's on there these days. And um, 
it will probably be there for a long time. Okay, great. Well, good. Well, thanks, Nicholas, for joining me today. Uh, tell people how they can find out more about Chili Piper. How can they find out about Chili Piper? Yeah, how they can find out more about Chili Piper. Well, uh, they can come to our website, uh, www.chilipiper.com. So that's Chili like Chili and Piper, uh, P I P R. And uh, they can contact me directly. I'm Nicholas, N I C O L I S, at chilipiper.com. I'm more than happy to talk to um, prospects, customers, or just uh, any general question. Great. Well, good. Thank you for being on the show. And remember, friends, make it a part of your day every day to deliberately learn something new to help you accelerate your success. And easy way to do that is to make this podcast accelerate a part of your daily routine, whether you're listening on your commute, in the gym, or as part of your morning sales meeting. That way, you won't miss any of my conversations with top business experts like my guest today, Nicholas Vandenberg, who shared his expertise about how to accelerate the growth of your business. So thanks for joining me. Until next time, this is Andy Paul. Good selling, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. If you like what you heard and want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming episodes, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher.com. For more information about today's guest, visit my website at andypaul.com.